scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, and who bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on course at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. But because that is the most potent way to bring transformation in the life of individuals. When the truth of God is accurately communicated, it sustains the power to lift people from their current level to higher levels and dimensions in the spirit. In Ezekiel chapter 2 from verse 1 and 2, it says, Son of man, stand upon your feet. And he had no strength, no capacity to stand beyond that realm. Verse 2 says, And the spirit entered me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet. We do not rise by intention alone. It takes more than desire and intention to rise. We rise in life on the strength of the knowledge and the understanding that we have. The life that we have received in this kingdom is knowledge dependent. So it is possible that even though you are a recipient of the life of God, your experience will be bankrupt of the potential of that life because the requisite level of knowledge and the bible says in first corinthians chapter 8 and verse 2 it says and if any man think that he knoweth anything it says let him know that he knoweth not as he ought to know that means there is a standard allocated for every result you do not freelance knowledge in this kingdom there is a standard of knowledge you must attain that is equivalent to every outcome I would always liken it to the performance of a student in school. If a student scores the grade F, F may not necessarily mean zero point. It may just mean he did not pass enough to cross that boundary. So if you have 29%, it is still F. If you have 37%, it is still F. In fact, if you have 39%, it is still F. Is that true? So if you say all those who scored F stand here, the person who did not write the exam and the one who came there and did not do well, the one with 1, 0, 10, 15, anything less than 40 will stand in the same group. So do not already program for failure by reason of the fallen man and the fallen nature. Nobody based on the realities of the fallen nature is ever destined to a life of beauty and color and glory to the standard God intended. It is now your assignment on receiving the life of God to walk in partnership with the word of God and the ministry of the Holy Spirit to now begin to introduce into your destiny the things I call the systems of advantage. Among them, favor. Among them, wisdom among them longevity so when you find out that a believer's life begins to blossom and excel like the tree that the psalmist said he shall be like a tree but that tree blossoming is a reaction the bible says when he's planted by the riverside a source of water as he receives that water which is the word it begins to translate to a blossoming tree are we together now I'm teaching tonight on speed. And this is a very deep subject that I wish we had all the time to do justice for. But then 
within the time that we have to explore this i'm praying in the name of jesus that our hearts and our spirits will be attentive because i give you a guarantee by the integrity of the word of ever move at a natural frequency from tonight in the name of jesus that for many of you it will take a take at the former place where you were and you will wonder that you had been that slow may god grant you speed Amen. let's begin our reading tonight with a very interesting story in the bible i love bible stories because the mysteries of the kingdom are usually hidden in stories hidden in parables and principles i think i have taught here in this church that essentially the bible contains three things every time you open scripture to study you are exploring three dimensions of god's word number one promises number two principles and you all of this tree you are encountering the promises of god you are encountering the principles of the kingdom prophetic diamond this is isaac discerning that his time was coming to an end and then wanting to bless his son esau i like us to look and we'll learn a very powerful i read and it came to pass verse one says that when isaac was old and his eyes were dim so that he could not see the bible says he called on and yet he told his son he said go bow and go to the field he says and take me some venison verse four it says and make me savory meat such as i love and bring it to me that i may eat and that my soul may bless thee before i die i can spend all the night here teaching you the reason why many people do not access the prophetic speakings from fathers because it takes more than bowing your head to receive a blessing there is a state that the spirit of a man must assume for blessings to truly flow this is a father speaking to his son he said if i just speak it will be empty words to verse 5 let's continue it says and rebecca heard now this is the problem rebecca here is his mother rebecca heard when isaac spake to esau his son and esau went to the field to hunt for venison and to bring it verse 6 rebecca spake unto jacob the younger son now saying behold i heard thy father speak other saying seven bring me venison and make me savory meat that i may eat and bless thee before the lord before my death verse eight now therefore my son obey my voice according to that which i command thee it says go now to the flock and thou shalt bring it to thy father that he may eat and he may bless you before his death we're almost there please be patient and jacob said to rebecca his mother behold esau my brother is a hairy man and i am a smooth man verse 12 my father peradventure will fill me and shall seem to him as a deceiver and shall bring a curse upon me and not a blessing and his mother said unto him upon me be thy curse my son only obey my voice and go fetch them verse 14 and he went and fetched and brought them to his mother and his mother made savory meat such as his father loved verse 15 and rebecca took good raiment of her eldest son esau which were with her in the house and put them upon jacob her younger son 16 and she put the skin of the kid of the goat upon his hand and upon um, the smooth of his neck uh-huh and she gave the savory meat and the bread which she had prepared into the hand of her son now pay attention we're ending at 20 and he came unto him his father and said my father and he said here am i he says who art thou my son 19 and jacob said unto his father remember his father is blind at this time i am esau thy firstborn he says and i have done according as thou bidest me arise pray thee sit and eat of my venison that thy soul may bless me if you are a christian read verse 20 together ready one to read and isaac said unto his son 
how is it that thou hast found it so quickly my son and he said because the Lord thy God brought it for me watch this so here is I to use for hunting and go to the field bring me um, one of the your your catch and make venison so that my soul will be provoked to bless you and Rebecca his mother heard called her younger son Jacob and said you know what we're about to deceive our father so that feel him even though blind and at the end of it the mother convinced him and when he suddenly appeared before his father and disguised himself and said he was Esau Isaac asked him a question how is it that you have found it so quickly that means you using the natural cause hunting is something that I understand nobody no matter how skilled should have actually gone to the forest and to have returned by this time you need to explain by what mystery did you arrive so fast because based on my expectation I, I am already prepared to be patient I know you cannot come by this time and even though this was deception the point is the answer he gave his father and his father agreed with that answer that that is the only condition upon which an individual can return fast he said father I know that under normal circumstances even though a skilled hunter it is not given to men unassisted to go to the forest the skill it takes to monitor these animals the first assignment of every hunter is to make sure you are not the prey yourself so you have to study the terrain of the forest to make sure the wild animals that may be stronger than you are at bay then number two the same way animals hunt their prey is how hunters hunt the prey remember there were no guns those days so you didn't have an advantage of distance to say okay i will shoot from a distance and the father said no 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 this is not the first time you are bringing me venison what happened to you what did you encounter that was responsible for such speed and he searched and said what answer do i give my father the only answer I know based on what he has taught me is that the Lord brought it to me let me speak to somebody in the name of Jesus Christ the one who helps men I prophesy to you by the power of the Holy Spirit that even when men do not expect you to have arrived may Ebenezer cause you to get there on time please sit down because the Lord thy God has brought it to me as soon as he gave Isaac that answer Isaac found rest he said you are right I know that there are possibilities that cannot happen to men unassisted this is a hunter and even though he was lying unfortunately what we are promoting here is not the state of his heart what we are promoting is the answer that he gave his father father do not be surprised that at age 20 i have built a house do not be surprised that at this level i am taking care of you and your mother do not be surprised that ministry is two years old and yet god has shown mercy that there is a possibility in the kingdom that men can outsource a system of advantage called speed and here jacob even though operating unfortunately as a deceiver is giving us a very powerful lesson that every time you see men demonstrating dominion over time do not think it strange that a possibility exists in the economy of God where people can have dominion over time dominion over time is the highest level of dominion because write the following please number one The unit of destiny is time a few thoughts that I want you to get and then we'll continue the unit of destiny is time that means you measure destiny as a function of time the next thoughts that I want you to have 
is something I wrote here I said under normal circumstances you may want to write that down under normal circumstances time cannot be reversed once it passes remember I said the unit of destiny is time and that under normal circumstances time does not go backward it only goes forward that means there is no possibility of going back into yesterday under normal circumstances is someone learning already another information about time that is worthy of note is that we do not have unlimited time hence the need for efficiency that means the time allotted to everyone is limited you do not have the luxury of unlimited time hence the need to be efficient it was the psalmist himself that taught us and said oh teach us to number our days he said that we may apply our hearts to wisdom that means the days of a man are countable no matter how long are we together now so the unit of destiny is time I said secondly that under normal circumstances time cannot be reversed once it passes number three that because we have unlimited we do not have the luxury of unlimited time there is a need for efficiency can I give you one more information I wrote down here that time can be invested time can be spent and time can be wasted these are the three things we can do with time time can be invested time can be spent and time can be wasted time just like money can be invested time can be spent and time can be wasted if God is speaking to you please say amen, amen. let me add one more then we'll attempt to define speed with respect to our focus tonight I wrote here that for various reasons you may want to listen and then write for various reasons for instance ignorance for instance carelessness for instance demonic factors for various reasons many already have time against them for various reasons an example ignorance an example carelessness an example demonic factors many already have time against them and we give that state many names in the kingdom chiefest among them is delay and stagnation when we say a person is experiencing delay or stagnation these are all linguistic terms that attempt to show to what degree he's lagging in time are we together now when you say someone is experiencing delay that means something is happening to him that is not making efficient use of time that time is against him when we say an individual is stagnated that means there is no motion whatsoever and like I told you earlier on you know that you are a victim of delay and stagnation if the only thing growing in your life is your age so you only continue to celebrate the advancement of your age but there are no corresponding achievements that justify the gift of that time are we together now if you are learning already please say amen, amen. These are very important thoughts that we may have, we need to have to appreciate speed as a system of advantage in the kingdom. If you just talk about speed arbitrarily, chances are excellent that your heart may not be open to see the value until you understand time and its implication. Now let's define speed. I'm not defining speed as physicists and scientists would define them as an attempt to help us understand speed I said speed is defined as your rate of accomplishment with respect to time your rate of accomplishment with respect to time I define speed as your rate looking at it now in the positive that means when God grants you an advantage to quantum leap in terms of your achievement with respect to time it is said that you are experiencing speed another way to put it is accelerated accomplishment 
in a short period of time i think that is a better expression of it accelerated accomplishment within a short period of time it must be an accelerated accomplishment and the time has to be short to be called speed when you study athletes especially olympians who run um there's what we call world record and the assignment of the world record is see, to see that you are able to cover that distance that race within as short a time as possible am i right on that so we have the 100 meters dash for instance i do not know sadly what the world record is currently there was a record before it is that true and someone outran that record using the factor of speed may that be your destiny in the name of Jesus Christ now the tragedy unfortunately is that in Africa it has become a subliminal programming to frown at speed in fact in Africa it looks to me like the more you seem to manifest speed in your life you become an instrument of suspicion so subliminally we have been programmed to do things late for instance if you build a house at 50 or 60 people will clap for you and say that is fine in fact you are even lucky if for any reason you seem to do much within a short time they begin to trace you to all kinds of negative factors and in a way they are not wrong because no man under normal circumstances if you understood all that we've discussed so far should be able to accomplish so much in so short a time if you study success success is a composite of many factors factors like value factors like time is that true factors like governmental policies factors like relationships so success is not something that comes easy um, of speaking from a normal standpoint this is the reason why it is usually difficult for people to achieve much for instance i may be a very valuable person as joseph but if the person who will introduce me to pharaoh forgets he can add two years to my time of wait are we together now so it is a composite of many factors that is the reason why it is not unusual people expect that the variables are so many for you to beat time to cheat time and to achieve so much within such a little time this is where god comes in that you go to the forest with your weapons of war you most likely are not the only hunter who will be there you most likely may it there is no guarantee that you will have a good catch every day is that true but then he answers his father and says i came back using the advantage of speed because god brought it to me So when you find people doing so much within so short a time, it takes a lot of emotional priming for us to come to terms. Somehow we religiously believe that God gives speed. But I think it's not yet a revelation that we have settled in our lives to insist upon. To say, Lord, if it is true that you grant speed, I want to see it working in my life. I want to see it working in my business. Now, don't get me wrong. There are many, many things. The law of process is a very potent law. And even though God gives speed, it is dangerous. A believer cannot live his entire life just on speed. If you live your entire life on speed there is a dimension of wisdom you will never have that is why growth listen success that comes from growth it lasts more than success that comes from inheritance because growth will mandate that you subscribe to the law of process and most times like we see in our world today when people inherit things without the track record of growth there is the, the knowledge that maintains that realm is not given to them and so they can lose it all overnight are we learning now so as we discuss speed i i need to put a disclaimer that this is not an attempt to downplay or to throw away the relevance of timing you would often hear the bible says according to the time of life even concerning jesus in luke chapter 2 and verse 52 the bible says and jesus grew he increased 
it didn't happen overnight even though he was the word incarnate he needed to go through the process until he was 30 years of age that was when he began his ministry however i am saying that using the natural course of life take note of the last point that i said that for many reasons reasons of ignorance reasons of carelessness mismanagement of time and then demonic factors most importantly many people already using their current state time is already against you i'll give you an instance if you get born again at age 50 congratulations for your salvation but you are already in trouble because it takes a long time to know god it's going to probably take you a lot of years to argue about the gift of the holy spirit until you finally open up yourself to receive the baptism of the holy spirit then another prolonged time if you are fortunate to be under a sound church that emphasizes doctrine like this then it may accelerate your growth rate but if you are allowed to freelance your spiritual growth you are in another kind of trouble again because it's going to take you even if you are serious with god it will still take it a bit of time to grow you it takes a while to know god hallelujah so when are you going to learn all the principles of the kingdom then begin to apply them are we together now yes there are many people who are at a point of disadvantage right now if you come from a family say for instance a family of 13 children and you are the first and only person who had the privilege to go to school i hope you know you are still not free no 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 in africa you are not free you'll be joking to imagine that you are free no you are not free because you have to outsource an intelligence to remedy the other lives that could not have your advantage first before you now start dealing with yourself that is based on the assumption that you will never have retrogression based on the assumption that you would have found the key to maintaining your victory if and when god prospers you so it is it is a very costly assumption and a risk to ignore this system of advantage called speed someone say in the name of jesus please shout it again say in the name of jesus i declare that speed begins to walk in my life from tonight hallelujah that men will ask you and say sir i know that it takes 20 years for a business to even gain its footing in nigeria what happened to you that with dignity the dignity of kingdom integrity in three years you're already rising among the brands within the nation and across when that happens make sure you do not forget to give them the answer of jacob the only difference is that you will not be lying like him what you will be saying is the truth that you'll be saying it is because god gave me an edge he gave me an advantage someone say speed let your destiny hear you say speed. speed are we together so let me recap for one moment on all that i've said concerning speed that the unit of destiny is time number two that under normal circumstances time cannot be reversed once it passes take note of my expression under normal circumstances because as you will be learning in the economy of god there is still a way that time can be reversed that is what makes him god the ability to have dominion and to exert it over time number three that we do not have unlimited time hence the need for efficiency fourth that time can be invested spent or wasted and finally i did say that for various reasons many already have time against them delay and stagnation are the names that we have chosen to give this state hallelujah but then according to scripture the bible shows us that there are two scriptural remedies for delay and stagnation in the life of a man that if for any reason you find yourself behind time all hope is not lost are we together now that there is still a way in god's economy to be able to gain time 
and there are two systems of advantage that have been programmed by god to help us redeem time number one is called restoration number two is called speed please write it down these are the two systems of advantage we find in scripture that can help the saints regardless the, the the setback that time has brought for them i don't know who i'm speaking to but in the name of jesus god brought you to this conference to collide with this these two forces the force of restoration and the force of speed I will discuss a bit more on restoration during the impartation service tomorrow and by the way let me lend my voice with apostle to plead with us invite everybody and come with a heart that is expectant because as you will be learning he said God gave it to me but I'll be putting it in context shortly what he meant by God gave it to me is what Elijah said the hand of the Lord came upon me that the hand of the Lord can come upon a man and he can grant you speed show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of Jesus we want to enter your rest will you show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the footsteps of jesus you want to enter your rest god is opening someone's eyes and saying if my father only knew this he was a sincere man but he did not know that all hope is not lost for the believer now you understand what the bible meant when it said for all things work together there is always something that can be added to the equation of your life that translates your tragedy into an advantage the force of restoration what does it mean to restore let me just touch on it to restore means to bring back moments as though a constraint never happened. Restoration is not progress. No. When we say something has been restored, it means that it becomes the way it would have been if there were no prior constraint. An example of restoration is what happened to Naaman. The Bible says when he washed, this was a man whose skin was once like a baby, but for some reason, something happened to his health and he deteriorated to a point where he was, you know, his skin was not a good sight to behold. And now having washed himself seven times in Jordan, the Bible records that his skin became, that is not healing, that is restoration. Another example of restoration is Ezekiel 37, the exceeding great army. That was not healing, that was restoration because they were once in a state of honor and joy and then something happened. As a deterioration of any sort, the assignment of restoration is to restore it back as if that constraint never happened. So for instance, you lost money you lost your job for instance you lost your house if you had a job immediately you graduated now is 20 30 years you probably would have been a senior executive the assignment of restoration is to upgrade your status so that the person who got a job and you that did not get it when they look at your lives we cannot see the dent and the constraint that is the assignment of restoration are we together But let's discuss speed that is what we're discussing tonight speed accelerated accomplishments within a short period of time I want to give you very quickly three keys auditorium has a number of doors and for every one of these doors especially the doors that lead to the outside they usually can be closed or open am I correct on that and you the keys of the kingdom it's not just a key the keys of the kingdom please if you can i want you to pray in the spirit in the next one minute and say lord open my eyes for the sake of my children for the sake of my ministry someone is praying for the sake of my business my organization especially the key
keys that control speed hallelujah are you ready for it please lend me your attention for the next 10 15 minutes and lend your destiny your attention because I submit to you by the integrity of the Word of God that if you take these keys and you handle them with intelligence you will marvel and wonder at what your life becomes this is true hallelujah Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 says arise and shine it says for your light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you every time I quote it in this church I like to quote from the amplified it says arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you it says rise to a new light hallelujah the first key that controls speed according to scripture and in the life of the believer is wisdom please write it down wisdom wisdom is the first key that controls in administering speed there is a relationship between walking in wisdom and walking in speed in matthew chapter 25 give us from verse 1 we know it as the parable of the ten virgins the parable of the ten virgins is a very concise description of the role of wisdom and folly in opening and closing doors scheduling seasons of speed or otherwise that story is a very interesting story because all ten were virgins so it's not about sin or righteousness all of them were virgins the entire text of the story is about wisdom or the absence of it for sake of time let me just recap on it but the full text is found in verse 1 to 13 you may write for reference 25 verse 1 to 13 so the bible says the kingdom of heaven is likened unto 10 virgins and it said they took their lamps and they went forth to meet the bridegroom so there was something a duty to do and they were to go and meet the bridegroom and the bible says among those 10 it says five of them carried extra oil all of them had lamps five of them carried extra oil and the other five they didn't expect the bridegroom to stay so long that is why delay is dangerous if the bridegroom came early there would not be an issue of five it was the delay of the bridegroom that separated people to see the value of wisdom or foolishness so delay is what really reveals who is wise or who is foolish at the start of life everybody looks wise but the delay of the bridegroom now showed the advantage that five had that the other ones did not have are we together the bible says the bridegroom tarried more than usual doesn't that look like how life works sometimes you expect certain things to happen but just the natural course of life things are delayed it was the delay of prophet samuel that mounted pressure upon saul to go and perform priestly duties and he lost his place as king delay is dangerous when we begin to pray i like you to pray with all your heart and to cause the spirit of delay but then more than the fear of delay the bible tells us that there is an antidote that prepares you in advance so that even when delay comes you are immune to it it is wisdom what happened to the first five also happened to the second five the difference is that the first five took out time to honor wisdom many people have dishonored wisdom to their detriment many have skill many are valuable but they have not taken out time to honor the place of wisdom the bible speaking says in proverbs doth not wisdom cry wisdom cries asking for those who are simple hearted to come the bible says get he says wisdom is the principal thing that in all you're getting get wisdom and in all you're getting get understanding it says exalt her and she shall promote you she shall bring an ornament a crown of glory upon your head when thou dost embrace her you can reject wisdom and sadly many have done so to their detriment are we learning now wisdom wisdom so the five carried extra oil 
and the others took for granted i'm sure they expected that no the bridegroom is too responsible to come late the same way you say my boss it's impossible for me to lose my job no i can't lose my job i know that there is a place for faith confession but when you are operating in the cosmos the variables are men dependent and you must be able to factor in that for instance the man who says no i have five children and i know my salary is more than enough to pay their school fees i would never think of setting up a financial system that helps you should in case covid was like the bridegroom it came and tested the wisdom or otherwise of many people are we together yes every once in a while on earth we have plagues or tragedies that befall men and every one of these is a test of wisdom there seem to be people who have placed value on wisdom regardless the vicissitudes of life they still are able to gain time when you look at their life you do not see the dent of delay or retrogression because of wisdom i'm praying for someone whatever has made you to neglect wisdom in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god may that grace for wisdom be imparted upon you now listen to me it is wisdom to study the lives of those who have gone ahead of you it is wisdom to have strategic valuable relationships because all blessings you may have heard me teach come from god through men to men you may want to write that down all blessings i don't care what it is it comes from god through men to men that means if god says yes and men says the heaven of heavens belongs to the lord but the earth has he given to the sons of men unfortunately the church of the lord jesus christ when it comes to accessing wisdom and intelligence for commanding dominion within the cosmos we are largely bankrupt we do not understand the place of relationships we do not understand the, some of these strategic things that grants the saints and grants men in general an advantage in life you may have heard me say for instance that who hates you in this kingdom does not matter but believe me who loves you matters a king hates a woman and she stops being queen immediately the king loves a village girl from Shushan and she becomes queen immediately. David falls in love with a crippled man called Mephibosheth to honor Saul and that man steps into royalty immediately. A midwife becomes careless at the point of delivery and renders someone with a great destiny to be crippled forever mephibosheth was not careless he was a baby who was mid-managed by a midwife midwives are those who transit your seasons and if they are careless they can cripple you even though you are well intentioned don't say men do not matter there are many destinies that have been tied down because the midwife may sadly be your parents because they were not born again you were not born again until maybe you went to school or trouble struck you and you found god by yourself imagine if you were saved at age two it would have been an advantage for you is someone learning i have learned as a principle that foolishness has a price that many people cannot pay most people do not know how expensive foolishness is the price of foolishness is heavy i choose the way of wisdom i choose the way of wisdom what is the way of wisdom follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise what is the way of wisdom and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture which is able to make you wise unto salvation are we learning experience is wonderful but experience can be very subjective the variables that need to be in place for the overall excelling of an individual's life are so many and they differ they differ based on gender culture context experience 
that is the reason why you need to trust scripture above and beyond your mind here's what the bible says proverbs chapter 3 from verse 5 it says trust in the lord with all your heart and it says to lean not on your own understanding so it acknowledges that you have understanding it does not say to throw it away but it says to lean not on your own understanding the next verse says in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path verse 7 says be not wise in your own eyes it says fear the lord and turn away from evil my life is too short to experiment my way to greatness the bible is a compendium of men who rose from nothing to the highest level of achievement that God can bring a man and here's what the Bible says that the things that are written aforetime it says that they are for our learning so that we through patience and the comfort of Scripture might find hope that means some mistakes do not need to be repeated it's unnecessary it's unnecessary to ignore God because that is the greatest expression of foolishness. The Bible says only a fool will say in his heart, there is no God. So the moment you get to that point where you start depending on your ability as though there were no God, the Bible says the name of that state is not just an attack. It is foolishness and it has a price. And by the way, you can be rich and still be foolish. There is a story of a man who showed the possibility of those two words coexisting in the life of a man. It was a story of the rich fool. It should never be. You can't join rich and fool, but that's what men can do. Men can create hybrids of problem that rich is supposed to be a product of wisdom. Is that true? Wisdom begin to pursue wisdom buy books learn don't take steps in ignorance it is an act of foolishness the moment you are bankrupt of sufficient knowledge stop moving your confidence is predicated on the knowledge that supports your action not your action action in ignorance is only recycling pain let me repeat myself action is very important but action in ignorance will only program and recycle pain no matter how much in a hurry you want to be be sure that there is sufficient proven knowledge that supports your action are we together wisdom let's hurry up key number two if someone is learning say amen, amen. you see why it's beautiful to come to church the Bible says I was glad when they said unto me let us go to the house of the Lord why because the house of the Lord is the place that we find wisdom it says in your light we see light someone will be walking out of this conference this night wiser knowing that this is the key I found it I found the reason why my life continues to be the next key that activates speed in the life of a believer is called favor please number two is favor for the sake of time i'll give us one verse exodus chapter 12 please and verse 36 when we have it projected i like that we read in concert exodus 12 36 exodus 12 36 ready one to read and the lord gave the people favor in the sight of the egyptians so that they lent to them such things as they required and they spoiled the egyptians ah. one day god will grant us grace to talk again and on that day we'll deal with this issue of favor i don't know how people live without favor it's like living without air favor is not an option no matter what is wrong in your life the absence of favor should not be one of them the number one reason why people succeed in life and destiny ladies and gentlemen is because of the presence of favor for many of you who may have listened to my teaching on favor i have shared a few thoughts about favor um one of it 
is that I attempted to explain why most people do not experience favor in their life. Our mainstream definition of favor is the very reason why we do not experience the favor of God. Because largely and respectfully speaking, across the body of Christ, the definition of favor that we know is unmerited access. And while that is not a lie, that is a very incomplete definition because favor is multi-dimensional don't get me wrong that I'm only saying that more must be added to it if you want to see the full picture of favor favor is multi-dimensional and not all dimensions are unmerited there are merited dimensions of favor for instance or oh, is hard is that in your bible good understanding can procure favor this kind of favor is merited because it is a harvest that came now you will learn and receive the impartation from your man of god you will return back with doors of favor opening you will only be grateful but not surprised that favor is working in your life are we together let me show you based on scripture god's portrait of favor if you do not find there are three forces that if they are not at work in your life favor is not at work in your life please write it down if you want to write number one unusual kindness number two unusual acceptance number three unusual access these tripartite forces must simultaneously be at work in an individual's life these are the necessary and sufficient conditions as far as the manifestation of favor is concerned one more time unusual kindness write it down please number two unusual acceptance number three unusual access if your life is deficient of any of these three it is not favor if it is favor at work in your life it manifests as unusual kindness number two it manifests as unusual acceptance number three it manifests as unusual access now you will understand exodus chapter 12 and verse 36 can you imagine ladies and gentlemen that the nation of israel at this time had been in captivity under pharaoh different kinds of pharaohs these were the people who were not even given the liberty to have straw remember they used to give them straw but when moses began to advocate their exodus in anger pharaoh said well i think it's because we're giving you straw for free you will now go and begin to look for it straw that will help in building egypt not their houses what suddenly came upon pharaoh that the bible says after 430 years he turns around and as though under the influence of some diabolic thing the bible says they spoiled them do you know what it means to spoil to spoil means to pick as you desire they were not given they spoiled them when people go for war and they defeat their enemies like it happened in samaria remember the prophecy in samaria that that is a spoil you don't pick a spoil at the mercy of the victim you pick as much as you desire so when the bible says they spoil the egyptians that the egyptians lent to them who told you the man who hated you yesterday cannot love you tomorrow it depends on what is on your head if pharaoh under the influence of the spirits that control egypt would look at enemies that he refused to what i do what suddenly came upon me pursue them i think i made a mistake in jesus name may the influence of favor come on some saying psalms 44 and verse 3 
my bible says they got not the land in possession by their own sword it says neither did their arm save them psalm 44 and verse 3 it says but thy right hand and thy arm and the light of thy countenance because thou showed a favor towards them exodus chapter 3 and verse 21 and i will give these people favor in the sight of the egyptians and it shall come to pass that as ye go ye shall not go empty luke chapter 2 and verse 52 and jesus increased in wisdom he increased in stature and even though he was the word incarnate he needed to increase in favor with god and with men hallelujah oh i believe in favor i don't know who god is speaking to you have been crying from january till now god is showing you that the missing link your company has remained stagnated in spite of your value your life has remained stagnated it looks like no one is there to attend on to you war betides a man who calls for help left and right and there's nobody to answer you you know the proof of favor is not money it takes more than money the proof of favor is the heart of men and dear towards you that you call upon a man and nations will answer and come to your rescue there are great people today in ministry who are stagnated and they cannot experience speed because no one has considered their life worthy of the investment of their resources their credibility and every other thing you can be joseph if you do not have favor with pharaoh you will still remain in the pal in the in the prison there was a man called Nehemiah in the Bible. Please sit down. We'll find somewhere to pray shortly. There was a man called Nehemiah in the Bible. And the Bible tells us that that man was a cup bearer. Is that true? That his work was to wait upon the king and to serve the king. But because the favor of God was upon Nehemiah, one day the king looked at his countenance and said, Nehemiah, I care so much about you. Why is it that your countenance is saddened? And Nehemiah said, I am here serving you. And I hear that the wall of Jerusalem is not been built and immediately without asking the bible says the king took it upon himself to write letters and make every resource available for nehemiah nehemiah went and began to do his building and when he began to build there were two men who came called sambalat and tobias they came and their assignment was to cause delay in his life but the bible says nehemiah invented a strategy for building with one hand he used the sword but with the other hand he built if both of your hands are holding your building tools you are in the flesh you will not finish that building one hand must hold the word of god your spirituality while the other hand now holds your technical skill this is the this is the the mistake that most people make they throw away the sword which is the word of god and say after all i have an mba and i'm not looking down on your pedigree but i'm saying in this world you need the sword and the skill together and there are others who hold the sword with both hands and unfortunately as powerful as the sword is the sword is not the instrument that is used to build the sword secures and protects you while you build is someone learning tonight so anyway i'm talking about favor listen to me unusual kindness unusual acceptance unusual access a village girl hears that the king has lost his queen drove her because of rebellion and they summoned all the virgins around the 127 provinces of the king and her uncle mordecai who served the king at the gate said well let me give my little girl a chance paradventure don't be surprised that the king can love a village girl and he carries that small girl and she joins the many virgins and the bible says they were kept under the custody of Haggai, the one who keeps and prepares the women for the king and Haggai comes to esther and says listen i've worked with the king for many years i know what he wants forget about all the rehearsals that other women are doing i will give you a kind of oil keep rubbing on your body for one year after that go and see the king i call it the esther anointing the bible says in esther chapter 2 and verse 15 
it says and esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her provided you set your gaze on esther it was like a charm that would come upon you you were compelled to become endeared to her and then to show you that it is a potent force in verse 17 of the same chapter 2 the bible says and the king give it to us please seven chapter 2 and verse 17 esther it says and the king loved esther more than above all the virgins that means before her arrival he was considering others but as soon as esther showed up the king forgot he had seen other people Is my God and His name is Yahweh. His name is Yahweh. Yahweh. Is my God and His name is Yahweh. His name is Yahweh. Yahweh. One day David is sitting in his throne now king and David makes a very disturbing statement he said is there any man left in the house of Saul I want to show someone kindness now you see the definition of favor playing out there I want to show him kindness they said there is none but he called a man called Ziba and if you read your Bible carefully the Bible tells us that Ziba had 15 sons any one of them would have been favored but no he said i want you to go to the house of saul no matter the disadvantage you find there fetch whoever is there and bring the person to the palace and now ziba goes to a place called lord deba and he went to pick a crippled man called mephibosheth a victim of the carelessness of a midwife no name but her carelessness was imminent in the life of this gentleman even though he was in the palace he never walked now they bring him to the palace and the bible tells us that he looked at him and said on account of saul's my honor for saul you are going to be with me at table here and ziba your 15 sons will be farming for this guy while he's there how do you explain that kind of thing can i tell you if every part of your life can be explained god is not assisting you there there has to be a mystery factor listen to me if every part of your life can be explained logically and intellectually it is proof that you are moving in the strength of the flesh there has to be a mystery component to your life that only the intelligence the size of god can fill that equation i should look at the equation of your life and see one plus one plus one plus one then if I see equal to 200 from mathematics you know that there has to be a missing figure there there has to many of us our lives are too ordinary and natural too predictable even by unbelievers and look at somewhere in the West here plus being raised by someone not having a father and mother alive now not having a job for the 10 years of your life how did you become this wealthy that you now have a foundation how did you become this and then you tell them that's the point that missing point is really my message my message is to tell you that God is able to pick a man from a donkey honestly I'm saying it from the depth of my heart for someone even you you will sit down from today and begin to wonder at your life it says I am the children that the Lord has given me are we Bible students it says we are for signs and for one without telling him you're a member of victory life he will help you say it, victory life because there will be a consistent thread of the manifestation of the favor of God in the name of Jesus listen I studied favor I dedicated a whole month in my life to study and pray favor because I didn't come from from a territorial background from a sociological factor territorial factor there was not much that was an advantage like that and I knew that if I had to do ministry with the dignity of kingdom integrity I would need to outsource this mysterious force called favor the world is too wicked to assume people will help you 
I can tell you people will leave their own businesses and stand up to invest their integrity their resources and their attention to your life no that is the thinking of a mediocre people are too selfish and too wicked it takes an anointing to compel men to keep their lives aside and now begin to dedicate themselves once upon a time two gentlemen or at least a few gentlemen took a crippled man and insisted that that man will be healed that day we never see the man praying and say help me Una, later on but as far as this have you met people in your life who insist that you must get a job this year and while you are sleeping they are awake and you are wondering you are almost afraid because you are trying to say i hope there's nothing attached and they tell you i don't even know why i don't exactly like you but there is an influence there is a force may that be your testimony again in the name of jesus christ you see it is very difficult for men of God to share testimonies today in the house of God because of the ignorance and the childishness that people find across the body of Christ. Sometimes when you want to share testimonies as a way of motivating believers to see the possibilities that exist in the kingdom, people can easily misunderstand it for pride. So most times we just leave it low so that we are not purported to be, you know, arrogant. But it's terrible because testimonies are powerful they help you to see graphically not just from scripture but we personify the possibilities of the kingdom in the life of an individual but we can spend all night as i attempt to read testimonies for you like someone reading a book for someone who is about to sleep we can open page after page and show you what god is able to do and in the name of jesus for someone you, you will sit down and spend the whole night with your wife just talking testimonies and you will not repeat any one of them that, that is that is because of the vastness testimonies colliding with testimonies do you believe what i'm saying favor my time is up let me give you the last one this is very important the last key that controls speed next time you see someone enjoying speed and you say you are lucky now you can mark yourself lucky has anything i've said sound like luck you can see the difference between someone who has this activated in their lives and otherwise there is no luck in this thing is a product of understanding the last key that controls the man speed provoking prayers let's go to scripture now mm. I'm under the shadow of your wing I am under the shadow of your wings your influence is all over me yeah. I am victorious I have overcome I am victorious I have overcome first Kings chapter 18 we'll begin our reading from verse 42 does prayer speed provoking prayer does it have any role to play as far as programming a climate of speed let scripture speak for itself and now verse 12 let's start from verse 12 please did i um 18 and verse 42 my apologies 18 and 42 18 and 42 all right it says so ahab went up to eat and drink and elijah went up to the top of Carmel. the bible says and he cast himself down upon the earth is that in your bible 
and put his face in between his knees remember before then he had told them he said go and eat and now he's beginning to pray and provoke the heavens to send rain after three and a half years of drought and he said to his servant he said go up look towards the sea and he went up and looked and he said there is nothing you would think that when he said there was nothing elijah would get up and say god i called upon you once and fire came what is now wrong with you that i'm praying he called on fire once and fire came now he's praying and he said go and check and he said nothing he said i know this works regardless the result i will stay i know that i can provoke heaven to send rain through prayer the bible says did he this he did seven times reading to 46 44 and it came to pass at the seventh time that he said there arised a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand and he said go and say to ahab prepare your chariot that means i have been able to use prayer to pull down realities from the realm of the spirit now it is at the brink of manifestation in the physical ahab use the best of your chariots as king you have an advantage because the best chariots belong to you as king use it now and begin to run otherwise the rain would come so fast it may catch up with you it says 45 Ah, I like this and it came to pass in the meantime that the heaven was black with clouds and wind and there was great rain and Ahab rode and went to Jezreel you are a Christian please convincingly read verse 46 with me one to read and the hand of the Lord was on Elijah and he girded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel let me on let me help you unpack what the Bible just says here that a man is praying and praying and praying and he gets the note of victory that rain is coming and that it is coming so fast and he tells the king use the advantage you have as a king the best of your chariots and now Elijah is left in a supposed disadvantage no chariot no nothing but the Bible says the hand of the Lord suddenly came upon the prophet and you know how a woman you know how women tie tie their you know that 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 wrapper and he tied his girdle and all of a sudden you are hearing a sound like horses and you turn back as a king and see a prophet running on barefoot and he will overtake you before you get to Israel what kind of grace is that can I tell you the most important thing is for you to arrive not the arrival of a horse if you are waiting for a chariot sometimes god may not need to bring a chariot he can make you the chariot himself and grant you speed lord i am trusting that you will give me a job if you are god let me get a job and god it may not be a job that comes but an idea can come that in three months you are already employing tens and hundreds of people I am victorious I have overcome I am victorious I overcome A man can stand from a point of disadvantage I know you don't have a job some of you are crying don't be afraid don't be ashamed of your tears that right where you are you can lock yourself and pray yourself out of certain things let me tell you many people are not yet tired of suffering many people are not yet tired of defeat there is something that happens to a human spirit at the point of pain there is a day you lock yourself and say I am tired of my wife feeding me my children feeding me an infidel I know she's faithful she's doing her job but Lord it's time to take my place as a man you may not know what to do but you can pray to know what to do James chapter 5 and verse 13 Apostle James is teaching us the dynamics of victory in the spirit and he says is any man afflicted he says let him 
pray then he says the fervent and the effectual prayer of the righteous availed much now he uses our same Elijah as an example to personify the power of prayer he says Elijah was a man of like passion as we are but he prayed earnestly that means there was no advantage in the life of Elijah by default it was not because he was a prophet why is this family this way why is it that everybody who comes to favor us by the next day it looks like they forget us you can turn every plate upside down in your house and say i'm not tasting anything until i find answers for my destiny you see let me tell you something proverbs 18 and verse 1 the bible says a get an intermeddler with all wisdom lord i am called i'm a man of character and grace but there is nobody to come and support me in the work of the ministry I, I this is pushing me to the corridor of compromise there has to be a way out and you can pray and pray and check and nobody has come and pray again pray again pray again what is this delay in my life and my destiny I started a building since 2001 that building was at Lintel level it is still at Lintel level till today and I started it as I got a job I am still a director today yet have not been able to complete that house it then means there are forces of darkness that want me to reproduce the failure of my predecessors let me tell you the Bible says say unto God how terrible art thou in your ways it says through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves selves to you the Bible does not leave us in the dark as to the fact that the whole world lieth in wickedness it takes spiritual naivety to tour this earth under the assumption that no force will be concerned about you even for Jesus he said Satan cometh to me and did not find anything let me give you one scripture that establishes our prayer point for tonight has God spoken to you psalms 109 as i was studying for this conference i found that scripture and it blessed me so much 109 from verse 26 and 24 may i please request that we read together when we have it projected psalm 109 26 and 27 okay are you ready one to read help me oh lord my god oh save me according to your mercy verse 27 that they may know that this is thy hand lord do it in a way that there will be no confusion that you are the one that did it listen now let me end from where i started esau how come you have returned so fast how come you are in a bell cutter and in spite of all the limitations of your family you still are excelling this is the answer i access help from heaven that the hand of the lord came upon me and began to help me rewrite the negative narratives someone right where you are i'd like you to open your mouth and begin to pray this is the season for speed ministry help me oh lord the psalmist said help me oh lord someone is praying just one minute to pray let it be from the depth of your heart grant me access to wisdom wisdom superior grant me access to favor men investing their credibility investing their attention towards my life now oh god i pray arise like a mighty god that you are is someone praying he says thou shall arise and have mercy upon zion for the time favor her the time to favor her yeah the set time man of god the time to
Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. My time is up, but I want you to pray. Everything you know in your life that stands as delay or stagnation, not speed. I crush this spirit of delay. Go ahead, open your mouth. Don't be silent. Delay in business, delay in outsourcing help, delay in ministry, delay in structural establishment. I curse you by the God of heaven. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, let me give you one more prayer point. My apologies for stretching the time. Listen, in John chapter 5, the Bible says, put that would lie there, men who were sick, important folks. The Bible says they were all waiting for the stirring of the water because it was customary those days that once in a year an angel of the lord would come to steer the water and whoever enters first everybody say enters first it was a subject of speed not motion whoever enters first that is the person who would receive a miracle and then there was a certain man the bible says who had the ability to take action but he never had the privilege of speed and even though he had action but because of the bankruptcy of speed his days continued to multiply in that place until he got to 38 years i'm sure after four years he would have said i'll be patient i know by the fifth and sixth year can i tell you ladies and gentlemen time does not change anything time only reveals waiting for time to change things is a total waste of time you engage the forces of the spirit to change any negative thing now the bible says at a certain time watch this now that jesus came there and jesus now asked the man a question and said would you be made whole then the man replies and he says i have no man apostle said this was his cry he never said i have no strength the reason why i've not been able to find speed is that i have no man that means for every man who overtook me there was a man that assisted him i'm establishing your next prayer point father i don't know who you need to send prophetically to my life to offer that assistance and grant me speed please open your mouth and pray send them oh god send them oh god to take away this plague of shame this plague of reproach in my life I have no man he said I have no man he said I have no man he said I have no man to grant me the loan I have no man to give me the business advice I have no man to introduce me to those in authority I have no man to invest in my creativity I have no man to discern the purity of the hand of God upon my life and to announce me to the nations he said I have no man and Jesus now comes as that man in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus we have to stop here let me pray over your life listen tomorrow I know that it will be a bit of a sacrifice but I'm lending my voice with the apostle over this house we may not have the time we have to honor and respect the time and your schedules to do the impartation to pray I will explain to you further tomorrow what it means for the hand of the Lord to come upon a man the hand of the Lord coming upon a man is the ministry of the anointing because the right hand of God is power hallelujah men do not just run I'll be showing you the scripture that the psalmist said by you I will run through a troop it says by my God I will leap over a wall that there is a grace that can bring down Jericho in one moment there is a grace that can grant men speed the Bible says as soon as Jesus spoke to the sea 
and said shalom be still he said immediately they were at the other side read your bible immediately they were at the other side these are the forces that control dominion over time and there are people here in this place right now listen very carefully before i speak please lend me a minute i don't want to take for granted that there is someone who came to church perhaps you are a member in the church or you were invited to come for this glorious conference remember the reason why the man remained stagnated there was he said i have no man and the man jesus left heaven and came to meet the various people who had been around the bethesdas of life not able to make any progress he did not just come as god he came as the incarnate of the father the man jesus and he's come to offer assistance and here's what he says the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill and to destroy he says but i am come that ye may have life and that you will have it more abundantly is that true there are people here who perhaps you have not really paid attention to the subject of placing your faith upon jesus genuinely and sincerely beyond the rituals of church and religion and then there are others who are saying apostle i remember giving my life to jesus but sincerely as it is right now my life has gone haywire the vicissitudes of life the challenges of life have beat down my passion and i need to rededicate my life i'm working on borrowed time i'm going to make the call one to five wherever you are i wanted to win that war finally it took the man to help the man at bethesda and in this case jesus has come as that man he said come unto me all ye that are weary and heavy laden and he says i will give you rest he says there remained a rest for the people of god that today if you hear his voice he says do not harden your hearts like they did in the wilderness i'm going to count one to five and you don't wait for anybody to be the first the holy spirit is convicting you and speaking to you it's called a holy convocation and in this solemn assembly he's giving you an opportunity to make it right with jesus wherever you are whether you are falling online across the globe or you are watching by way of television or rebroadcast or you are in this auditorium jesus is calling you i'll make that call I'm, I'm waiting for that one person who loves jesus more than your reputation who will not say no to the voice of the spirit as i begin my counting please make your way to the front wherever you are i begin my counting now one let's celebrate them as they come Two. don't be ashamed don't be afraid he's giving you a new beginning victory life is this the best you can do to encourage them come let me sing a song for you while you make your way to this place no i have seen no ear has heard what god has prepared for you so you submit to his work in you till christ is formed in you no eye has seen no ear has heard his work in you till the christ is formed in you till his glory revealed in you till his his work in you till christ is formed in i salute your courage thank you may i please request as a way of surrender that you lift your right hand high above your head and say this after me as loud as you can say lord jesus, lord jesus. Tonight, tonight i have heard your word I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave 
is broken over my life I declare that I'm a child of God from today I go forward ever and backward never amen keep your hands lifted father thank you for this once the Bible declares that as many who will come to you you will in no wise cast away by the authority of scripture I declare your sins forgiven and in the name of Jesus I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is by this confession broken forever over your life and in the name of Jesus I call you recipients of the life of God I commend you to the Word of God and to the ministry of the Holy Spirit that you be grounded and established in righteousness Amen. you go forward ever Amen. and backward never Amen. in Jesus much less name we pray Amen. hello scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you